Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. For example, the equation for the linear portion of this tensile stress strain curve is sigma is equal to epsilon, sorry, E times x, where E is the proportionality constant that is Young's modulus. The value of Young's modulus may be determined by other means. For example, if uh, nu is the velocity of sound in a material of density rho and the Young's modulus E, then there is a relation mu is equal to square root of E by rho. This is one way of uh, finding an Young's modulus. The other way is the usual uh, tensile uh, deformation within the elastic region, the slope is equal to Young's modulus. Okay. And similarly, we have uh, we are looking at uh, E here as a proportionality constant as per the ela linear elastics theory. That is what uh, the previous uh, slide last statement said. Uh, and we are now looking at what are the proportionality constants in the in terms of elastic behavior. So, several different elastic proportionality constants are in common use. They differ only in the type of stress and strain which they relate. Okay. This also we have seen already just to give a perspective of what is proportionality constants, I have brought it again. So, this is Young's modulus which is uh, E is equal to sigma by epsilon and shear modulus G is equal to tau by gamma, bulk modulus K is equal to sigma hydrostatic divided by the volume, change in volume. The above equation, sigma is uniaxial tensile or compressive stress, tau is shear stress, sigma hide is a hydrostatic tensile or compressive stress epsilon is normal strain, gamma is a shear strain, delta V by V naught is a fractional volume expansion or contraction. Okay. Poisson's ratio mu, another elastic constant is the ratio of transverse to axial strain, mu is equal to minus epsilon Y divided by epsilon Z. This uh, equation we have used extensively in the principle of superposition and then from there uh, we, we, we looked at uh, generalized Stokes law. That is very familiar to you now. Okay. So, the diagrams which uh, are going to show now is going to explain geometrically whatever we have just seen uh, in terms of you know uh, the elastic. This is a, a member which undergoes uh, tensile deformation. So, you see that uh, L naught becomes L after the deformation and then you see that change in length and then you try to calculate the, the displacement and then from there you calculate the stress and strain. Similarly, this is for a shear, shear stress, shear strain relationship. Uh, geometrically it is shown. Um, what you arrive at here is E is equal to sigma z divided by epsilon z, this is in the z direction. Similarly, here uh, g is equal to tau by gamma. So, all this uh, shear, um, I mean how the dimensionally it can vary, this is already familiar to you. Uh, we have already discussed. So, I just brought it because uh, we are talking about uh, elastic properties and this is how it is related. And finally, this is hydrostatic stress versus volume change. Uh, the slope is um, k is equal to sigma hyd hyd hydrostatic divided by fraction of volume change. And you see that uh, geometry, the, the, the stress is equally applied from all over the place. Here it is a compression. So, so the initial dimension L naught becomes L, the final dimension. So, it is not uh, in one direction, all, all other direction also it getting compressed. So, it is a hydrostatic compression. Yeah. So, uh, coming back to this uh, isotropic elasticity, if any two of the four elastic constants that is E, G, K and U are known for a material which is homogeneous and isotropic, the other two may be derived. This, uh, this also we have already seen some of the relations. Uh, uh, we have demonstrated, but then uh, uh, these are the other relations. We will be using this relationship uh, in the 
fracture problems in solving fracture problems or any failure analysis problems okay will be it is quite useful now uh, we'll go back to what we have just discussed um, atomic basis of elastic behavior i just uh, said in the beginning uh, we will come back to this topic little uh, later and then I, I also mentioned that we will discuss it much more detail about this uh, atomistic basis for elastic behavior. So, uh, the potential energy V of pair of atoms may be expressed as a function of distance of their separation R where capital V is equal to minus A by R to the power n plus V divided by r to the power m. So, we have talked about this coefficients, uh, sorry not coefficients, exponents n and m right initially. Um, so, in order to save time, I am just uh, going little fast, where a, b are uh, uh, constants and uh, proportionate constants for attraction repulsion and n and m are exponents giving appropriate variation of v and r. Um, the expressions for the forces of attraction repulsion existing between two atoms may be derived from the expression of potential energy in the form. So, this is uh, this also we have already seen. So, from this is a potential energy, this is a force. So, so this is just a simplification. We will now plot these two potential energy versus uh, distance and uh, and this is a force versus distance and we know that uh, this is uh, repulsion and this is attraction and this is a net dashed lines are net and what is uh, to be noted here is uh, importantly the value of r corresponding to the minimum of potential energy is the equilibrium spacing d naught so here it is the minimum the potential well here and this distance is d naught that is the equilibrium spacing and remember the net force is 0 here, the net force is 0 at d naught, d naught. So, this is d naught and this is a net force, it is a 0. So, although these curves describe the behavior of an isolated atom pair, the same kind of behavior is exhibited as a free atom approached an existing crystal lattice. A net attractive force at first exists potential energy decreases which then reduces to 0 potential energy reaches a minimum at a distance d naught where the forces of attraction repulsion are in balance. So, this is uh, some kind of a description about this region. Um, so atoms in a crystal structure tend therefore, to, to be arrayed in a definite pattern with respect to their neighbors. So, because of this uh, force balance the atoms are trying to be in the respective I mean in equilibrium with the respective neighbors right. So, uh, yeah we I have already introduced this name Canton Morse curves uh, these kind type of curves and now we will try to relate this with the Young's modulus. So, what is that now we are now taking a force versus R plot uh, we are only showing the the net uh, force right not we are not showing the attraction repulsion here it is only a net force and we know that it is a d naught which is an equilibrium. So, the slope at this point uh, at this point d naught is showing the elastic range right that is that is nothing but dou f by dou r that force what we have just seen in the previous slide is uh, is, is from this idea. So, this elastic range uh, is marked here. So, you can appreciate this is the this is uh, the atomic basis for the elastic behavior. So, we will just see the uh, salient features. So, macroscopic elastic strain results from a change in interatomic spacing. So, we are now talking about macroscopic strain please uh, note it it is not just two atoms now we are talking about a bulk property now that is macroscopic strain elastic strain please elastic strain um, that is resulting resulting from the change in interatomic 
So, macroscopic strain is what this is what we know L minus L naught by L naught in a given direction is equal to average fractional change in the interatomic spacing that is D minus D naught by D naught in that direction. So, this is valid for a, a given direction. In fact, in the in the beginning of this uh, uh, course, we have also looked at some uh, normal strain and average strain and so on. Uh, but here we are talking about we are also talking about the macroscopic strain similarly. But then, if you are specifically interested in the direction, then you have to uh, relate that way. Okay, so that is the idea. Yeah, this is uh, uh, already we have seen. So, the normal range of elastic strain in crystalline materials rarely exceeds plus or minus half a percent. So, this is a thumb rule just to have uh, idea. So, uh, yeah, the tangent dou f by dou r here very nearly coincides with the force curve in this area of the strain. So, this is one confirmation uh, to uh, show that this assumption is not uh, bad, this is good. So, the elastic range uh, really coincide with this. Okay. So, that was uh, kind of uh, atomic basis uh, uh, discussion on elastic modulus of materials. So, now we go to uh, a bulk material behavior but we are still talking about elastic properties, but we will talk about bulk behavior. Okay. What is this uh, diagram which is shown here? Uh, this is a very interesting diagram. You can see that a tensile stress, uh, this stress is y axis, uh, strain is x axis and it is further divided by four uh, compartments, tensile stress, compressive stress, tensile strain, compressive strain and then um, the stress strain plot is going through the center. That means, the material is showing elastic behavior in tensile region as well as in compression region. That means, it is something like you take a material, elastic material, pull it in one direction and then compress it. So, how the stress strain uh, behaves or, or what is that linear relationship you are seeing. So, something like that. Okay. So, very interesting. So, a typical elastic behavior of crystalline materials in compression and tension. We are now talking about crystalline materials. Uh, please remember that. Okay. Crystalline material elastic both tension and compression. Although the maximum elastic strain in crystalline material is usually very small, the stress necessary to produce this strain usually great. Very important point, you have to pay attention to this details. It looks all very you know familiar to us, but then if you just pay little more attention, the new information you will get. What is that? Though the elastic strain, maximum elastic strain is very small, even though the very small elastic strain the material experiences. The stress necessary to produce this strain, even the small strain will be much more, very important. Okay. This stress strain ratio is high because the applied stress works in opposition to the restoring forces of primary bonds. See now you see immediately, we are now talking about mechanical behavior, but we are now talking about bonding. right? So, now you will realize why we started with chemical bonding. right? So, this stress strain ratio is high because the applied stress works in opposition to the restoring force of primary bonds that is ionic covalent metallic. So, what it means is uh, you are applying some load that load has to work against the, the primary force restoring what is the restoring force that is a chemical bonding for any material right. So, that is a restoring force it has to work against the restoring force that means unless you have some idea about the, the restoring force which is a chemical bond and we are talking about load that means bond en energy and bond strength unless you have some idea this cannot be related directly. So, so now you, uh, you appreciate that point. The elastic behavior of such materials under compression is the same 
as their behavior under the tension. And the compressive stress strain curve is merely an extension of the tensile stress strain curve as shown in the figure. Very important aspect. S we are talking about elastic behavior of a crystalline um, material uh, both in tension and compression and uh, this particular graph shows that the, the linear behavior exactly the same in compression region as well as a tensile region, right. Certain non-crystalline materials such as glass or cross-linked polymers may also exhibit linear elasticity for the structure is such that distortion is opposed from the start by primary bonds. Some of the non-crystalline solids, glass or cross-linked polymers, they may also exhibit similar uh, S bonds but not always the case, okay. So, uh, again they have to work against the, uh, the restoring force, right, like primary bonds and secondary bonds and so on, especially in a, a polymeric chain and all, you have not just a primary bond like a metallic bond or ionic bond alone, it, it has also got a secondary bonds like uh, hydrogen bond, Van der Waals bond and so on. So, this uh, another plot is very interesting plot uh, which looks very different from what we have just seen before. Let us try to describe this. What is that uh, this plot shows? So, you, this is first of all this is not linear uh, both in compression and tension. It is a non-linear elastic behavior uh, that itself quite interesting, right. Um, but in, t in tension it is quite I mean the kind of amount of elastic energy the material takes is quite significant as compared to the compression region that elastic energy, okay. So what could be the reason? So that again can be uh, correlated with the, the type of uh, bonding, right. So what is this? Typical elastic behavior of elastomers in compression and tension. So, now we, we are getting to specific uh, material type, okay. Uh, previously, we just talked about general uh, crystalline materials. Now, we are talking about elastomers. That means, you have to think about where, what is the type of bonding, what is the type of crystalline nature and so on and so forth, right. So, the other non-crystalline materials which are composed of intertangled long chain molecules such as rubber may exhibit recoverable strains of several hundred percent. So now we are not just talking about a uh, long molecular chain alone. There is another complication to that that is intertangled. It is not just long molecular chain but also uh, a tangled in nature which will uh, ex exhibit a recoverable strain of several hundred percent. So, that means lot of elastic energy it can absorb. It is not just that the same thing can be recovered which is very good, right. So, a rubber is one example, right. I have also shown in the introduction video one eraser, you know, a thick eraser. You know, I could bend it to any, uh, any degree and then it could come back. Such materials are elastomers and their elastic behavior is usually called high elasticity in contrast to the true elasticity of crystalline materials. So, this is just a, a simple nomenclature. In elastomers, the straightening of chains in the direction of applied stress can produce appreciable macroscopic elastic strain at low stresses. Very important point. Uh, we are talking about elastomers and we are talking uh, we are talking about straightening straightening of what straightening of the intertangled long chain molecules so that itself takes lot of uh, initial uh, energy elastic energy or load whatever it is in a direction of applied stress to produce appreciable macroscopic elastic strain at low stresses once the chains have been aligned however further elastic elongation requires 
stretching of the chains in opposition to the primary bonding forces within them and to the secondary bonding forces between them. So, uh, the previous case the crystalline material we just talked about just uh, a restoring force uh, the applied load or a force have to act against the restoring force here it is slightly different. Again before you go to you know restoring force there is some other obstacles are there that is intertangled long chain molecule. Okay. So, first of all the those intertangled long chain molecules have to be become straight. So, that itself takes some amount of energy and then further stretching it in an elastic region right. So, which will again uh, act against the restoring force like primary bond and secondary bond so on. So, therefore, elastomers that, uh, show a nonlinear elastic tensile behavior as shown. So, so, this is about elastic tensile behavior, but why compression is little different okay? that we have to just see. Compressive stress applied to the elastomers initially causes a, mo a more efficient filling of space in the material. So, in an entangled molecule if you try to pull it, it try to align first, but instead of a tensile force if you try to compress then you can imagine lot of you know already it is intertangled. So, all the gaps get filled. So, that takes lot of energy I mean, but then but that energy is quite different from what we just talked about okay, in a tension mode. So, in compressive stress takes uh, or I, I would say cause a more efficient space filling of the material. So, that is why the it is quite steeper it completely steeper as compared to the tension mode. So, you can see that it is this curve is quite steeper compared to this uh, tensile curve. As the available space decreases the resistance to further compression increases okay, until finally, the primary bonding forces within the chain begin to oppose the applied stress. So, all this uh, space you know get filled or the, the space available for further compression decreases increases the uh, stress compression stress that is why the slope is quite steeper as compared to the tension mode. Here the stress strain curve in compression thus increases in slope as uh, deformation increases. Okay. Okay. So, uh, similarly we will go to some other uh, material and then look at how this uh, stress strain behavior looks like. Hmm. Maybe I will stop here and uh, we will continue in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.